Well, we've finished our Joy in Philippians study. Moving on now. Uh, today I'd like to look at Thanksgiving faith. Thanksgiving faith. <clears throat> in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, we just had that read this morning, but uh, in verse number 3 it says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Father, we thank you again for your word, for your presence, for our salvation. And we thank you for the commission you've given us. We thank you for the fellowship that is available to all within your local called out assembly. We pray, Lord, for your blessing on this day. Lord, that you would uh, take away those hindrances, those things that would distract, Lord, whether they're in our minds and, and our hearts or if they're in the environment. Lord, help us to keep focused on you and your word because in that is the truth. In that is the power. Lord, to be all that we can be, that you take us to glory. Show us your way today, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Oswald Chambers wrote, Faith for my deliverance is not faith in God. Now, you'll see what he means by that here in a second. He's not saying that you shouldn't have faith that God will deliver you. But what he says is, in the next statement, faith means whether I am visibly delivered or not, I will stick to my belief that God is love. There are some things only learned in a fiery furnace. Amen. Sometimes God has to take us through a fiery furnace. You say, but I trust God. Maybe that isn't about your faith. Maybe it's about someone who's watching. Maybe it is about your faith. Okay, But God never leaves you. We look at the Hebrew children that went through the fiery furnace. We would never have known the faith they had to say, we'll not bow to the idols if they hadn't had to go through the fiery furnace. They said, we'll not bow the knee to a false god even if it means our death. Now, a lot of people are full of talk, but they don't really know how to walk the walk, right? And these men, though young, they stood for the Lord. They, they said, we will not bow and, and show obe obedience to a false god. And so they said, we have to put them in a fiery furnace. And so, as they went, they said, we'll not bow, our God can deliver us, but if He choose not to, we still won't bow because we know that's the right thing to do. And so as they bound them up to throw them into the fiery furnace, it became evident to them, probably, that God wasn't going to deliver them. Now, I have no doubt that there was fear, there was concern about the temperature, about burning to death, all of those things. And yet they said, we're not going to quit. We're going to do what's right. And if they had not thrown them in that fiery furnace, we hadn't seen God bring them through without even the smell of smoke on them. We would never have known their true faith. You may not know how much faith you have, or God is building in you, until you go through a terrible time of difficulty. And for certain, the people around you won't know your faith is real until you face those fiery trials on your own and they see you come through with a faithful attitude, not giving up, not losing hope, not losing all your peace and joy because God's making you go through a difficult time. And that's when your testimony will really shine among those around you. I want you to think back to the most difficult time of your life, just for a moment. 
I don't want you to get caught up there, but I want you to think about the most difficult time of your life. Do you remember, because you survived it, obviously, all right, you're here today. Do you remember that there was some person, or maybe several people, that were there to help you, either in the difficulty or on the road to recovery and restoration from whatever that was. God puts people around us. A lot of times in the difficult times, we can't see anything but the problem. And often we pray, but do we really have faith? Are we really able to have a thankful heart in the middle of a big trial? Are we struggling? And when people come in, we just say, you don't understand what I'm going through. You have no idea. And we're pushing away possibly the very people that God has put in our lives to help us through this time. Because honestly, most of the time, God chooses to use people in our lives. When our focus is all on the problem, the hardship, the hurt, we fail to recognize the blessing of those people that God has put into our lives. That help is based in faith and love. Faith in God, not in ourselves. Faith in God, not in the people around us but faith that God knew what he was doing when he brought those people into our lives, that God knew what he was doing when he allowed us to go through these fiery trials, whatever they are. They can be financial hardships, they can be loss of a job, they can be health problems, they can be children in trouble or siblings, they can be the death of a loved one, whatever it is. And we're going through it not because it came as a surprise to God that it was going to happen, But we're going through it for a purpose. Glorify Him. Show our faith to the world. It shows us who we are and how weak and fallible and how much we need Him. But it should also ever bring us closer to Him, ever in a stronger faith, ever able to pass on the gifts and the blessings that He gives us. It says in the Scripture in Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We need to fill our lives up with the Word of God. If we stop and think about how much we listen to, how much we allow into our lives every single day, and then compare that to how much of that is God's Word for us. You know, in a very practical sense, if you do that with anything else, if you take something, even if it's concentrated, and you put it in a container, and then you start to add other things in, it gets more and more diluted. And if what you're putting in is polluted, so does what you're putting, you know, what's already in there. We have to think about that. Are we church? They see a people that are concerned and they care enough, they have enough compassion, they have enough love that they do something about it. And it says, every one of you, wow, what kind of a testimony is that? What kind of power, what kind of reach, what kind of influence could joy have if every one of us were filled with a thanksgiving faith of God that motivated our love to actually do for other people. One another in the church and the people we help. We do have a lot of outreach. We support missionaries all over the world. We have a, a printing ministry that sends the gospel message, the hope of Jesus, all over the world. We have uh, ministries like uh, Abigail's Tent that collects food and, and gives it to the needy. We collect things and we have people giving and we go down uh, all through the cold months. Now, no matter how much we do it with all of our heart, people still have a choice whether or not to choose Christ. Okay? 
No matter how hard we try and we are engaged in things, all of the results are up to God and the choice of the people, whether they choose God or not. People have tried to be there for you when you have, I don't want you in my life. And you have no idea the blessings you've missed because you did that. (laughs) Me too. How do we get there? It is rooted in faith with thanksgiving. When we begin to see that everything that we have is by the grace and love of God, we'll begin to appreciate it more because we didn't earn it. Now you say, but people really appreciate things when they have to earn it. Well, I, God will give you exactly what you need when you need it. But if you're that screaming child throwing a tantrum and won't do what you've been told to do, you really think God's going to bless you with something? Is that when you gave your kids something? When they were throwing a tantrum? If you did, they're probably in bigger trouble today. (laughs) Okay. Your connection to the Lord Jesus Christ And that is strengthened by the Word of God always in your life. But everything, so that no matter what happens, no matter how strong the wind, the storm, no matter how bad, you know, the, the precipitation in our life, if you will, it's still rooted in Him. All of your real nutrition, all of your real power is coming from Him. If not, and your life is filled with all these other things, and so your roots are going out into social media, and your roots are in the, the internet, and your roots are in the news media, your, your roots are in some job that you have that's making you rich, or going to take care of all of your problems. Guess what? You're going to be more focused on the problems, you're going to be more focused on those things, then you are the Lord Jesus Christ, and when he points somebody out, you're going to say, I don't have time. I don't have the extra energy. I don't have the extra time. I don't have the extra love. I'm running low on my own. That's because you're not rooted in him, or you would know the love of Christ in your life. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. I like the way the translators use that word, established. Most people replace it with established. Okay? Like we built something here. Established is different. It says, I'm going to stake my claim. Boom. You know, when the explorers came to a new place, they took the flag and they stuck it in the ground. Now, they could have been good or they could have been bad. Like all those uh, Spanish ones that went into South America. You know, they planted their flag, so to speak, and said, okay. This all belongs to Spain now, and all of my power to do whatever I want here comes from them. It has nothing to do with you. Okay? If our stake is in the Lord Jesus Christ, then all of our power, all of our purpose, everything that we're doing is for Him. And unlike those conquistadors who were there to rob everybody blind and enslave everybody, when you're established, when you're bored down, you plant your life solidly in Jesus Christ, then he says, look, everything is for his glory. Everything is for the benefit of the people that I put you there to reach. It's not something we build on our own. It's something we have and we claim and we use as a guidepost because our entire life and our entire identity is established in the Lord Jesus Christ. Fixed on Him permanently. That is our belief system. It becomes our new world view. You're not taught a world view like that in school. You're not taught that in the places you work. You're only taught that in the Word of God. You'll only be able to do it if you are established in Him making sure it is the faith, the truth of the Word of God. And the only way to counteract all that stuff that's coming into your life is to make sure that you're filling your life up 
with the Word of God and with Him and, and prayer and service to Him. And when something comes up and you know the Word of God, you've got the answer and it obviously is wrong or it's right. If you have no reference point of truth, it's really hard to know the false. People repeat and repeat and repeat until you just begin to believe it. People tell themselves stories over and over and over and over again until they believe that that's what really happened. Happens all the time. You could put them on a lie detector test and they would believe it because they have convinced themselves that that is now the truth. It's not. And he said, you rooted and built up in Jesus Christ, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, abounding in that belief and that relationship, and so thankful for it because you know what God means in all of this. And you know that if you have nothing else in this world but Jesus Christ, you have everything that matters. And it changes how you look at what you have. It changes your perspective. And with Jesus right there beside you, you don't have to fear the things that we naturally fear. Losing what we have. Not having enough for tomorrow. Ah, not with Jesus there. You know, there were 5,000 people around and. They said, we don't have anything to feed him. Jesus said, well, what do you have? They said, well, we have a few loaves and fishes. He said, that's plenty. And he fed them, and they had 12 baskets left over. You see, when Jesus gets in, Jesus gets involved, little as much, in the hands of Jesus. It's not about what you have, it's about what he can do. Your greatest service to the Lord is your loving, faithful, active presence in the life of the hurting people around you. He said, I'm going to heaven. People need you. Now they need you so attached to me that they get me in the process, Jesus said, but they need, you. They need a light in this world. And you can't be a light like Jesus in this world if you're living like the devil, if you're living, trusting in everything else but Jesus. They don't need that. The world's got all of that. And it's still going to hell in a handbasket, as they say. It's de deteriorating around us. Now, it's never been perfect since the Garden of Eden. We understand that. But everything is decaying, including our society. That they need to see something right. They need to see some light of hope. And the way they realize that it's real hope is not that you say so, but that your presence in their life makes a difference. I really like this, William Arthur Ward. God gave you a gift of 86,400 seconds today. Have you used one to say thank you? How much of the 86,400 seconds you have every day do you use to thank God, to thank others, to, to be a blessing? For me, thanking God is, it comes natural. I don't, it's just, that's no problem for me. But I am so focused on process and, you know, um, project that oftentimes I have an expectation of people around me and so I don't say thank you like I need to say. And that's wrong on my behalf. And I, I don't say thank you enough, and, that, and I'm trying to fix that, but I'm, I'm working and working, and I'm, I've got expectations. If you say you love God, and you know, when you work for the Lord, you ought to have a high standard, you ought to be going, I shouldn't have to pat you on the back and lift you up all the time.
But you know what? That's people. And we need to do that. So what's easy for one may be difficult for another. Maybe it's easy for you to thank people, but you don't think about thanking God all the time. Maybe you think God owes you more, and so you're not very thankful. But you're not thanking him because you don't feel thankful. But you don't know Jesus, and you don't know what that world is really like. If you're going to have this loving, faithful, active presence in the lives of people, which actually is at the heart of the Great Commission, okay? If you don't have that, you're not going to be able to have that active love. That life-changing, gracious love, charity that people need. It requires a thankful, genuine, enduring faith that is not based upon circumstance, but based upon your relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. One more time, I'm going to ask you to remember a time when someone was there for you, when you were overwhelmed and you were losing hope. You were in too deep. Your eyes weren't necessarily on Jesus. You were just wondering if you would survive it emotionally, mentally, physically. I don't care. And then someone helped you through it. What was it about the approach of that person in your time of need and in that time when you were pushing everybody away that allowed you to open up your life and let them in, let them help you? What was it about that approach? You've experienced the power of that. Maybe you can use that to help someone else. We're all different. I understand that. That's why God put all of us here. We all need to be doing it, right? And if we're all doing it, God will give us the right people in our lives, and we will be given to the people that need us and need what we can understand, we've experienced, or, or we can at least have some compassion over. And be a light of hope. Be a word of encouragement. That person that made a difference and that opening up yourself to that help, what was the most significant impact to your mindset? The most significant thing that helped you see that there was yet hope, that there was a way out, there was a way back to peace and joy and love and forgiveness and all those things. Stop and think about that for a little bit. That mindset. And that may be something you need to recover today so that you can say, thank you, Lord. Let me pass on what you gave to me. Because Finally, I ask, how has that change in your mindset played out over time? Are you still that person? Or have you gotten so frustrated with people? Or so rejected by people? Or so worn out because you're trying to do it in your own strength that you're not that person? You don't have that mindset anymore? need to recover that. How do you do that? Get back to Jesus. Get back to Jesus. Get back to Jesus. Thank Him for what He's done and trust Him for what you're going through and share that with somebody else. In order to do that, you need to know Him as Savior. You don't have His Holy Spirit. You don't understand the Word like you should unless you have His Holy Spirit within you and you don't get that without receiving salvation from Him. If you don't know what that means or you don't understand how to do that, as we sing, you need to come let us know. Talk to somebody nearby. They'll come with you or they'll help you right where you're at to understand. And for those of us who are believers today, have we lost that passion? 
to love and serve and give others? Have we lost that thankfulness to God that empowers our faith and helps us to be grateful for what we have and satisfied with what God's doing in our lives? To help us to know that whatever God does is the right thing. And there's a reason for the hardship you're going through. There's a reason for the difficulty, for the fiery trial, whatever it is. Just give it to Him again. Father, as we come before You, we pray for Your power to change our 